Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're going to do a shrimp room tour. It is the 10th of May and yeah, I've actually turned all the lights off above so we can actually see the shrimp properly. So let's start off on this side of the room because we never really do go over here. And yeah, you're going to get a little bit of glare from some of the stuff but my shrimp tanks are absolutely thriving with shrimp right now. So let's start with Opa Uli because yeah, they are um, breeding a phenomenal pace in here since I moved them. I'm not sure if it's going to come out on camera all the little babies floating mid-water around the place. Sorry for the glare as well, but yeah, my, my lights are off as much as I can get them off. And the stuff that you see on the surface there is just powdered flakes. This is what I feed this tank. Let's see if we can see anything special. So one of the things I notice about Opa Uli is anything that has like a dark head on it is a female. The dark part that you see is actually the saddle. You can see the some of the shrimps swimming around there that have berries. Right? So any of them that you see that have a dark patch on them. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer because there's quite a few of them here. Like so here, you see them, they have all the dark patches like this. These are all girls and then that leads on to them being buried like this. Isn't that cool? Right in mid-water, you can just see them probably guys. It's very hard to do this with the amount of glare that I have in my room. All the little, really really tiny little babies that are floating all over the place. Maybe we can see them up here a little bit better. And yeah, the tank below is just the same. These guys have babies a lot as well. I'm trying to see if there's as many floaters on the top. And yeah, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to keep two colonies of Opa Uli or what, but I think, I think guys, if, I, if I'm really, if I really want to be cautious with this kind of stuff, I should really keep two tanks just in case one fails for some reason ever, right? So, yeah, I know how to breed Opa Uli shrimp. It's pretty easy. Let me zoom out a little bit because I'm a bit close. They're very easy. You want to match the salinity. For these tanks, it is 1.015, if I remember correctly. And these guys never get a water change. They get fed roughly about once a week. Some powdered food or a piece of... A piece of... Tub some kind of tub food, whatever I have or whatever I'm using at the time. So there's the Opa Uli tank. This next tank is just doing phenomenal. You can hear by my voice, I'm really, really proud of this tank. And I think guys, a lot of it's to do with, with um, because I added some extra filtration, right? So this is just the breeder box here. Let me take off, I may as well show you this when we're doing our little room tour. Right, and I filled it guys with white Polyfill stuff, you know the stuff that's like cotton, all that green stuff there is polyfill. And we have a pouch of uh, purigen there. Because I don't like to have brown, brown water in my tanks. And underneath here we have uh, ceramic rings and all different stuff in there. I'll try and get it underneath just so you can kind of see a little bit more. Oh, you can't, can you? You see it's all filled there. So this gives this tank an awful lot of filtration. Look at it, the size of it. There's a good two liters more extra filtration material there than would be standard. So we have that on top of the sponge that protects the intake. This is a really, really easy modification if you want to try and do this yourself. Basically take the end of the little nozzle that should be here and you add a uh, a sponge filter, all I did was silicon, this little bit there. And yeah, it has made a fantastic trickle filter. You can, if I can go over here, you can see it. It is more or less trickling in. You can see it. And that has re re resulted in the tank being absolutely phenomenally filtered, right? And I can always tell guys when the tanks are doing really well because the plants are doing really well as well and yeah so are the shrimp let's have a look i pre-fed the tanks in advance about 15 minutes ago 
just to get them out of the front. This is my fitting day for them as well. And yeah, my shrimp are doing fantastically good. Let me see if we can zoom in. Just a little bit. This uh, camera has like four different lenses on it and yeah, they're, they're pretty good. This is just my mobile phone as well. But you can see all these glorious images. I think this uh, one here on the leaf is buried. They've had quite a few babies. It's always nice to see. And yeah, that is this tank. Isn't it looking good, guys? The only thing it's probably missing is the baby boom, which will probably come quite soon. I would imagine. Let's quickly go over to the bottom tank here. This was the Blue Dream tub originally, and now it's more or less a mixed Neo Carradina tub, and it has loads of endlers. I think it has some bristle nose pleco in here as well. Let me see if I can put you over the top and you can see past all the glare. Do you see anything down there, guys? So we have the Val in here. I think this is probably where my, most of my remaining Sawasatang is in here. Duckweed as usual, big double sponge filter in the middle. And I think, guys, just because um, I'm starting to struggle with my vision a little bit, this might be changed to a fish tank. Sooner rather than later. I'm trying to put in wide there. Wide doesn't want to go. But yeah, there's a lot of endlers and shrimp in here. Let's quickly go over to our crayfish tank. And yeah, there, there is crayfish in here. I just can't see any at the moment. I actually put food in here. So what they tend to do, there's one right at the back there. What they tend to do is, is grab the food and boat. I actually noticed a little fish in here earlier on. Look, you see it? One of the endlers, it must have been when I moved some plants for this tank here. I must have caught a baby and put it in here. So there's one little fish. Look at you, aren't you gorgeous? Gorgeous mother. Of course, this is a boy. Let's go up a level. Blue dreams. In here, and quite a few of you guys have commented that my blue dreams don't seem to lose their colour rate, but they do watch. Let's zoom in a bit here and see, see how they're all mixed. So they do, yeah, they do lose their colour eventually. I'm not super good with the culling on neo tanks, it's probably why I don't have any more bigger tanks. I actually added a hang and back filter to this tank because I didn't feel that this one single sponge filter in the middle was enough, especially when I have fish in here like bristle nose you can see in here. I didn't think it was enough. So that is that tank. I've actually been playing around with some eggs that I found in a drawer here guys to see if we can spot any fairy shrimp. Can you see any in there? I haven't spotted any yet. I've only added the eggs a couple of days ago. But I redid this tank a little bit. You can see it's looking pretty nice. And yeah, it's gorgeous. And this is Hygrophilia Sunset, this one, even though it's very, very green. Look how good that picture is. Let's have a little look from the top. Can you tell me, guys, if you see anything, please? I can't. This tank is needing to be changed over. This is just a cherry shrimp tank. Tell me if you see anything in there. Yeah, there's cherry shrimp in there. Put food and leaves and stuff in here as well to keep the tank going. And I think this will be one of the ones that we do redo pretty quickly, I think. Okay, this is a bamboo shrimp tank. I have some uh, tangerine tigers in here as well. I'm trying to keep on top of my feeding with these guys, but it's very hard not to get string algae when you need to feed powdered foods for bamboo shrimp. Let's see, can, can we actually see any? One in the filter. Do excuse the glare. Try to zoom in a little bit. Oh, not that far, Mark. Not that far, but yeah, but these shrimp are really nice as well. If we need to feed powdered foods into this, so that is why the tank does get a little bit dirtier looking. Oh yeah, they often like to hang out at the top. I don't know if you can see anything at the back here. If there is. Um, we do have a couple of bristlenose plecos in here as well. 
So I think what I'm going to do with these guys, there's one of them here. I think what we're going to do with this tank, guys, is I don't think it's optimal. So we're going to put all the shrimp and stuff in, from this tank into here. And we're going to repurpose this tank for something else. We'll probably put that filter into this tank too. Let's have a little look at our cherry shrimp tank. God, they aren't half multiplying. <laughs> so we did a big, uh, big. Uh, we removed a lot of the, the moss in here because it was just grown so much. And as you guys can see, it just keeps on growing, grows and grows and grows. So if you make moss the dominant plant in the tank, it will just keep on growing like berserk. So this is how you grow java moss. Let's have a little look at the shrimp. We also have a bristle moss pleco in here as well. And yeah, I would say this tank has been successful. What do you think? The only thing I notice, guys, is the bristle moss pleco in this size of tank don't really grow that large. But I'm, I'm satisfied with the numbers in here. Let's have a little look. Hopefully it won't bolt. Or her, or whatever their sex is. Let's have a little pan along here. And yeah, I am really pleased with this actually. I thought the I actually thought that the that you know that I wasn't culling enough in here. And I basically took out about five blue ones. And you can see the rest. Let me see. Cameras the camera wants to focus oddly. Isn't that good? So yeah, I am really really proud of this tank. As you can see, these guys get this uh, tetra main tab once a week. I do this guys because I like to give my bristle nose this type of food as well. And yeah, we also give them leaves. The leaves are really important. I have these in all my tanks. I put these into my tanks as I need them guys. So like for example, this leaf here is still good enough. I wouldn't put a new one in, but when I do, I take them and put them to the back of the tank. You can see that in some of my other ones. Now I think I did think I put food in here. I can't seem to see where they are, but yeah, this is my really tank, and it's looking really nice. Look, it's looking really nice. Let's see if we can zoom into these guys as well, because yeah, this this uh, phone does actually have a macro camera. Oh, oh, it's not not mega good if you go too close, but yeah, it is much better than me using the GoPro and stuff. You actually can see all the shrimps. Let me look at your face there. Now I think if I try and zoom in anymore, it will go to focus more, but well, let's see. No. Anywho, so that is that tank. We actually have another soft water tank here. I'm showing you this guys because before this tank was pure green. And I have a theory that um, if you have green water tanks, there are bee shrimp tanks with a soil like this, what you want to do is you don't want to go ahead and do massive water changes, right? Because all you're doing is removing the acidity out of the tank, right? You don't want to do that, right? So what you want to do, you can go and check my old videos. You can see this tank here was very, very green. All you want to do is give it time, right? So from my last video, it was green. To this video, it is clear and you see it. Again, I do apologize for the glare, but it's a necessary evil to show you the shrimp in the shrimp room. This is a grow it tank for my super crystal reds in here and they're doing nice. These all come in here when they're babies, very very small. And yeah, I actually think there's some berry shrimp in here too. There's not millions of them, but the tank is coming along. It's coming along very very nicely. Look at this moss. I love moss. In case you didn't know, I love moss. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Alright guys, we're going to start looking at my bigger bee shrimp rack over here. And yeah, this is the cold tank here. The cold tank, let's see if we can zoom it a little bit here. This is the cold tank here and it has been going through some changes. I've actually been really, really managing the feeding on this tank really, really well. Right? And it's really important, guys, you want to breed bee shrimp tank that you manage your feeding really, really well because if you don't, all you'll end up with is dead shrimp, right? So this tank had a really, really bad algae problem. 
If you go back to my last video, you probably would have seen it. All this was just full of algae, string algae everywhere. Not, the, I would say string algae, it's more like the spongy algae than the string algae. And I think that was because when I set up this tank, I actually used a sponge filter from my goldfish tank and there was a lot of mulm in it guys. It was really, really dirty and the tank was like, it was almost like a layer of poop on the bottom of this tank. And yeah, that's maybe not the best way to do this type of thing because the tank after this struggled for a long, long time. And yeah, I, when I do water changes in this, I'm gradually just sucking up all the stuff here. And the reason you're not seeing all the shrimp near the front is because yeah, I'm not feeding the tanks unless they need food, right? So I see all this green stuff. Probably about 70% of shrimp's natural diet is algae. And so I can see lots of algae still in here yet. So yeah, like there in the moss, we can still see algae, right? So we are not gonna feed this tank until the tank is cleaner. And you guys should do the same. Here we have our blue boltus tank, and guys, it is coming along really, really nicely. Let's check the date on this. This was, uh, where was it, the 17th of the 12th, right? So this tank is about four or five months old, coming up for. And yeah, I went with a deeper substrate in this than, than originally was in it because, yeah, I can, guys, I can kind of tell when the substrate dies because uh, the plants start to go yellow. And this one was going yellow, and yeah, since we added more substrate back into the tank, everything's went green again, you can see it here. Let's have a look at these guys. They're coming along nicely. Let me adjust it. If I can adjust it, let me see. Yeah, the brightness just a little bit so you, you guys can actually see the shrimp. Let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, there you go. You can see when my camera changes the lens. But these guys are nice, aren't they? So these are your typical, I would say, very low grade <laughs> blue bolts. But they're nice, I like them. Tank next to it is, uh, was just set up at the start of this month. This is just a stock tank that I'm going to be using for any future shrimp I get. And guys, I think it's good practice to do that as well. Just keep a tank empty for when you need to because you never know when someone might give you shrimp or you may want to set up another breeding thing so always good to have a square tank you'll notice a theme with my tanks guys is i like to have a lot of floating plants on all my tanks let's start up with the middle part of the racking setup and he, these are super crystal reds these are the breeding colony of the Super crystal reds I showed you before. Let's uh, have a little look and see if we can see some of the babies. Let's see. I'm trying to see some of the very small babies. Sometimes it can be very hard. Let me see there's what I can see there's one up here. Whoa, you see it? The tiny little ones. Uh, so, if anything guys, with a tank like this, see the little ones there? I'm not moving these on fast enough. You can see there's buried girls too. Yeah, I'm not moving these shrimp on fast enough. So a lot of these will stay smaller. But yeah, that is what it is. I need to get on top of my game with this tank. Let's go into the crystal red shrimp group tank next to it. Yeah, these guys are coming along superbly as well. You can see a couple of buried females there. So this is when I should really be deciding whether I want to keep these females like this and move them to the breeding tank, which I should really do. I should really go through this and look at them and see which ones need to stay here or go up to the breeding tank or go to the cull tank because yeah, I can see some culls here too. Let's have a little look. If we can spot any culls. Now this one here, this one probably is a cull. This, this one dead center it's, it has very, very little white. Yeah, but they're coming around really, really nicely, guys, I think. Let's look at the great tank for the Crystal Blacks. And I would say they're coming along really, really nicely as well. I'm trying to see where the food is. Yeah, the food is here, you see it? So I put a food in, piece of food in, about 15 minutes ago. 
and yeah it is almost gone so that this was the right amount of food you can see another bit of the bark there you see it so this was the right amount of food for these shrimp you can see they're kind of going off the boil a little bit so yeah that was the the right amount oh my god guys i just noticed something there I just know do you see it hydra again dead center of the screen i don't know what it is i can't get rid of hydra for some reason oh i think we've I think it's there, but it's zoomed in too far. You see it there? Yeah, I can't focus on it. It's, there's Hydra dead center of the screen, so yeah, I'll have to treat this time. Yeah, I can see it in other parts of the tank now as well, on the glass. Little bits of Hydra. So that's uh, something I didn't see before. So this is the golden tank. Let me give you an overview from the top. Loads of floating plants, as I said. I prefer Salvinia because um, it grows really fast in the right conditions and the roots tend to stay shorter, guys, than stuff like frogbit and whatever else. Let's have a little look at these guys. Yeah, these are coming along really, really nicely. I'm actually really, really glad that I decided to do these, actually. Can't tell if that is in focus, you have to bear with me a second guys. There it is. Are they looking good? I can't see if there's any buried shrimp in here yet. I think they're still a little bit too small. But that is the golden tank. Lots of algae. Lots of algae, lots of uh, moss. This is another breed out tank for our Crystals, this one actually needs some of the plants removed from the top. It's not a good idea to have this much. Guys, I like to have at least half the tank floating plant matter like this. And guys, the other thing you should notice as well is when you're looking at stuff like this, look look at the color of the salvinia. You, this also applies to duckweed because yeah, different colors mean different things. Like if you look at this, well fertilized, this probably means this is uh, running out of fertilizer, but I already know that, but I'll just sort of show you this. Crystal Red Shrimp Tank, Grow, or Breeding Tank actually, these are a lot of small ones still. But they're looking really nice, aren't they? You can tell it's a breeding tank with the amount of buried females and stuff. Looking good. Let's go over to the Grow It Tank for our Fancy black tigers. Aren't they doing really, really well? Yeah, I'm so proud of them. But so here is a good example of, um, I have been culling this tank, guys, but you can see like here, look. Let me zoom in a little bit. The shrimp that is dead center of the screen, you see it kind of looks like a crystal block, you see it? That would be considered a cull because it actually does look like a crystal block. You see this one at the back there as well, that would be a cull, see? Same with that one there, dead center, looks like a cull. Anything that you see that has the Hiramuna, Hiramura type sign in the back with the tiger tooth coming off it that looks like a crystal black shrimp is a cull. In my opinion, it looks like a cull. Let's see. I did, I culled this last week, that's why it looks they look quite good. Let's jump up to the top rack up here. Let's jump up to the top rack. This is a breeder tank. You can tell it's a breeder tank with the lack of males. Now I generally have mostly females in here, the odd male, and you'll see a bunch of babies. This tank is a good example, guys, of what we was saying before, where uh, you add a leaf when necessary. Yeah, this this tank needs a leaf, I can tell. Let's have a look at a little look at the shrimps. I wonder if I can go that close. I can't look at that. It's magic. Okay, so we have buried girl there. This is a super crystal red that I put in here. Just I wanted to see if we can get some pure red line out of it. I'm not sure if that's possible. Let me know in the comment section below if you do. This one is probably need moved on. That's a pretty, very pretty looking male though. You see it? We might leave you in the tank. Guy dead center, this one. 
another female this mixes of little ones and yeah again you see the same thing we have Val in here this is something we're going to include in more of my tanks guys that you will see in future videos as well Val I love the shimmer that you get from LED lights my Poseidon's here is growing a little bit yellow I'm not sure if it really likes a soft water but all the other plants are doing fantastic look at them aren't they doing awesome let's look at a tank next to it now I had a little bit of an issue with this tank guys and I'm going to tell you why in a second. Um, I could tell I was overfeeding this tank because I was getting a lot of that puffy cotton algae. You can see it here. And I was starting to get the odd dead shrimp in here. Right? So there's definitely a sign that you're overfeeding the tank. So what I did was I dosed H2O2 and I did it twice. And you can see here it's killed all that fluffy algae. And uh, we have no more dead shrimp. Let's have a little look at the shrimp because it looks like the tank's bare, doesn't it? Until you come along here. Here we go. Here we go, right? So as I said, the, my breeder tanks have less shrimp in them, but what they do have is more females. Most of the time they'll have much more females than, than males, right? So here you can see a couple of girls. If you look behind at the back, most of these ones at the back, the bigger ones are are girls and you see that like the ones in the dead center there you see the super the crystal red it's a small boy I'm purposefully keeping that in here because what this tank is guys it is a tank where I pump out uh, just different types of shrimp so we'll see in the future like this one here is a crown dead center is a little it's a golden crown uh, what I like to do is I like to have different types of males in here so that we get lots and lots of variation in the breeding. So it's basically a bee shrimp tank that has mixed genetics and they fire at all different types of babies, right? And that is how I'm able to more or less right, get like three or four different types of shrimp all from the one tank and breeding the same, the same uh, shrimp together, right? So this is what you would do as well if you wanted to breed Michelings. You'd have your, for example, you'd have your favorite crystal blacks or goldens and you'd cross your male Taiwan bees with them and then you'd get the odd Taiwan bee young. This is how you mass produce Taiwan bees as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's get on to the last tank which is over here. And this is my breeder tank for my uh, black fancy tigers. And it is just really, 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 really doing well now. Plants are just booming. Let's have a little look at the shrimp. Wow, look at that, aren't they gorgeous guys? So these guys just pump out babies constantly and you saw before the footage of the of the young underneath, I was just lowering the brightness just a little bit so you can actually see the shrimp. And yeah, I'm starting to get enough red ones here, not high quality ones, where I could probably start my red fancy tiger tank up again if we wanted to I probably will because I like to do all these little experiments and stuff and you know like have uh, have fresh goes at doing something that I maybe failed with before like I, I had red ones before red fancy tigers and the more or less the colony died out guys because I wasn't watching the feeding and you know you know what it's like you, you're like just constantly do water changes because you think that is the answer and well we know now that is not the answer so yeah, we probably will try and start our red colony up again. And it's just going to be a fun time. None of my, none of my shrimp are like mega high quality breeder shrimp. And, and uh, you know, I just do this for fun. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video today. I, I thought I'd make it a little bit different. I used a different camera as well, just so you guys could actually see the shrimp a little bit better. And, yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Happy shrimp keeping.